Davy Johnstone talks about that Elton John rock album, Rock of the Westies. It was a different sound for Elton. Of course, he always rocked on all his albums, but here's one rock song after another. Davy Johnstone talks about Rock of the Westies. Now remember, Davy has a brand new album out. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can buy it. Also links to the entire interview. Usually when we release part one of an interview, the entire interview is on our sister channel, Rock History Book, and there'll be links right at the top of the description if this clip is not long enough for you and you want to hear the whole thing. So check that out. It's also a podcast. Here's Elton John's famous guitarist, Davy Johnstone. Rock of the Westies. How do you look back at that album now? Because I, to me, that was really refreshing because I like the rockier side of Elton. It was it was new to me, even though I'd heard it and started out like, you know, but how do you look back at that album now? Um, well, it was great. The fact that we were, you know, I, I love the fact that Elton and I were starting to write a little bit more together. We wrote Cage of Songbird for Blue Moves, but we did that during Rock in the Westies. And the same evening, uh, there was a lot of booze around that night and, you know, other substances. And I remember it was like he wanted to do a rock and roll song. So we wrote Grow Some Funk and uh, full title Grow Some Funk of Your Own. And I remember the next morning Elton said, oh, that's a great song we wrote last night. And I was like, yeah, Keisha Songbird, that was beautiful. And he said, yeah, but there was the rock song that we wrote. And I go, what was that? And he said, grow some funk if you want. And I went, oh, shit, yeah, forgot about that. And we went over to the studio, got the band in there, and we recorded it that day. Um, so, you know, nothing's really had changed that much from Elton's point of view. We didn't try to make a, a rockier record. It just came out that way because suddenly it was like, okay, we got a bigger band. Let's just rock out a little more. So uh, I do remember um, on the tour, the tours that followed, Louder Than Concord tour and stuff like that, uh, Grow Some Funk became the, the opening song because it was just such a, you know, it would instantly get you, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's good fun. But I must admit, just having said that, my favorite times have always been, I've got to say, with the original band. And, and, you know, and I include Ray Cooper in that because such a phenomenal musician Ray is. And, you know, we still try and have, you know, socially distanced nowadays dinners together whenever possible. Um, but yeah, it, it, that, those were my favorite times recording with just the four of us in there. And... Was there ever a time where there could, outside of Blue Moves and, and Goodbye Elbrick Road, was there ever a time you guys came close to it, another double album where you had a lot of material? Well, we never even thought of, of Yellow Brick Road as being a double album. We were just recording songs. It was just a bunch of songs. And they, they seemed to have this, this cohesive, this feel about it. And they seemed to all belong on the same record. That's why it became a double album. You know, we didn't go out with an album, with an idea of saying, let's make a concept album. And that happened as we were recording the songs. Right. So, le so later on, yeah, the, the thing about Blue Moves being a double album happened because he wanted to make Elton wanted to make a double album. Uh, he wanted to do more of a collaborative thing with the musicians on the album. So as a result, you know, uh, myself and James Newton Howard and Caleb Quay and uh, you know, we became co-writers on many of the songs in that record. I think we wrote, maybe, I know that I'm, God, I'm a co-writer on about seven or eight songs on that record. And Caleb's on about maybe three or four. Uh, so Elton wanted to have, the band involved as involved as possible so it was very kind of him it was you know really um uh, you know he wanted to get everybody involved and um, that's why that ended up being a double record that's one of my favorite albums of all time as well you know the, the thing about blue moves is there's so much different genres going on on blue moves and and caleb by the way i asked him was there any competition between you and davy he said not really i didn't feel any he says i kind of i really he says he can't help but like the guy <laughs> yeah yeah we that was that's to this day that's Caleb and, and, and my, uh, you know, we talk to each other a few times a year and just have a good laugh on the phone, you know, and uh, we became known as the tapestry section because um, with all the, the stuff, every time we, it was, I've got to say, it was strange for me, suddenly after all these albums, just being the only guitar player to suddenly have to make room for somebody else. Um, but again, as I said earlier in this chat, we've had, um, I, I always like to, to, you know, be collaborative, get, get, bring the best out of somebody else. So that's the way that our minds worked on, on those albums we did together. And uh, it was really only Rock of the Westies and 
and Blue Moose. And after that, it was that was it. We were done for a while. We're not retired. We'll have another clip from David Johnstone in a few days. Remember, if you want to hear the entire interview, it is on our sister channel, Rock History Book. And this is also a podcast. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video and a link for you to buy Davey's brand new album. Make sure you comment on our videos. We love, we read all the comments. Buy a t-shirt, you can help support the channel. And remember, subscribe to the channel. It makes us very happy. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself.